Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA-18C and we're looking at using the A9 Sidewinder in air-to-air -air combat. So if we load up, we can have the Sidewinder on pylons 1, 2, 8 and 9. 8 and 2 are twin mounted if you like, so we can have a 6 in total. We have it three flavours, the L, the M, the X. Unless you're doing time period restricted missiles, then you're always going to use the X. So let's load up with 6 X's. Fire the missile, push and hold gun trigger, second detent. To select the missile, it is just select Sidewinder. We will be using radar tracks here, so to initiate an ACM boreside track will be sensor control switch forward. If we want to reject a radar track, we can undesignate. If you want to cage or uncage the seeker head on the missile, cage or uncage. There are essentially three ways in which we can utilize the AIM-9. One is without a radar track, second is with a radar track, and the third is with or without a radar track using the helmet mounted sight. Now the helmet mounted sight version we've already covered in a separate video. So we're just looking at basic with radar track and without radar track. So the check master arm is on and it is. Let's select the weapon, select sidewinder. We can hear the tone, the growl of the sidewinder. We know that we're armed and we've got the missile selected because we've got AIM-9X selected and we've got the six of them. We're looking at our SMS here. We can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six missiles. The left of these two is currently selected. No further options here regarding the Sidewinder. This circle here is representing where the seeker head of the selected missile is gimbaled to. It can gimbal up, down, left, right, omnidirectional to a certain limit. So it's my job to maneuver to place a hostile within this circle or near to this circle until the missile seeker head picks out the heat signature. When it does, I'll get a tone, a high pitched squeal, and that means I can fire. Regards ranging, there is no ranging. We have to completely range by eye unless we have the radar track versions. Actual missile range is anywhere between two and 10 miles depending on aspect altitude and speed and whatnot. Hostiles on the nose. Now assuming that they are close enough to be locked onto via their heat signature, we should get a tone. You hear the tone now. Now note if I move off, we lose the tone. What I can do is uncage my sensor to that heat signature. So find the heat signature, press the uncage button. That is the seeker head uncaged and it will now follow that target wherever it goes within the gimbal limits of the missile. If I want to reject that target, I can press recage and we recage the missile. We can shoot in the first cage mode or uncage mode, it's up to us. One thing to mention is that this particular variant, the X version, is a HOB, a higher off bore sight missile. Vector thrust so it can fire very high off bore sight, especially in combination with the helmet mounted display. So let's go and shoot one of these guys down in uncaged mode. Find the target, uncage, whoops, uncage the missile. Aim a slight a bit ahead of him so that we can get some lead. Press and hold the trigger. Kaboomy, that should take him down. You see how it's had to pull loads of lead. Boom. So let's look at the second method used with a radar track. The first thing we need to do is get a radar track. We can do this from various methods. We can do it from an ACM search or we can do it from BBR search. And we have videos on both of those. We're just going to go straight to an ACM search and the default is going to be bore sight. So sensor switch forward. It gets our bore sight up. Let's go find the bad guy. Put him in the bore sight. We've now achieved an ACM track so let's just hold there we're a radar range of 2.8 miles away from the target we have a closing velocity of minus 60 knots that means we're separating by 60 knots we've got a radar lock here this box is the target designated box the same you'll always get if you get a radar track this is the same circle as we saw before but this time because we've got a radar track it's automatically uncaged itself and slaved itself to the radar track that is the beauty of the radar track version it will slave itself to the radar track even if that radar track is high off bore sight and and well away from the HUD. Now before we go any further, I want to show that we can still reject by recaging the missile seeker head. Watch this. I press cage. We've actually rejected the target now and we can pick up the slave the target again by pressing uncage and we've now re-slave. Next, the all important ASE circle, a very common thing for any modern fighter is this circle here, allowable steering error circle in combination with the steering dot there. The idea is that we are to maneuver so that the steering dot is inside the circle before we take the shot. The closer to the center of the circle the steering dot is when we take the shot, the more aerodynamically efficient the shot will be. Next, around the outside of the ASC, we will see the hostile relative heading. So it's saying that relative to me, the hostile is heading that direction there, if you like, kind of cold, 
and slightly flanking left. Next is the ranging information on the ASE itself. So you see this guy here. This is an inner clock inside the ASE. It's going to count from up here to here where it's got to. And as we get closer, it's going to count in and in and in and in, in until it gets here. And then we are basically at zero. There are markers, including him, him and him, giving us guidance at when to fire the missile. This is our max, the maximum range of the missile in current parameters. This is range no escape or range lethal. Once we are within this mark here, then we can fire and there's very little chance that he can maneuver to escape. And this is minimum range. If we get within the minimum range, then the missile will no longer function. It won't be able to fuse in time and so on. Now, once we get our range queue here inside our max, a shoot queue will appear, which says that we can shoot, basically. Once we're in our lethal here, the shoot queue will flash, and we will only get the shoot queues if our steering dot is in our ASE circle. First of all, we need to get in range. So burners on, and let's maneuver the steering dot inside the ASE circle. One thing I should mention is that although we have a radar track, we still need the tone. Without the tone, this missile won't be working. Within our max, within our lethal, the shoot queue is now flashing, and I'm going to get her up right in the middle and take a shot about there. Box two. Off the gas. And that's a dead target. So those are the two main modes of using the AIM-9. And I will link the high off-bore sight method of shooting with the helmet-mounted sight display in the video description. I hope that was useful and see you later.